The Sun, the Surf, the Bulls and Cowboys of the Professional Bull Riders. Marquis is going to move to the top. Today, this cattle drive dare turns to the high tides of world famous Huntington Beach. It's time for the PBR stars to shine. The top 15 bull riders in the world face the toughest 15 bulls for a Sunday afternoon showdown. We've got a new world number one. It's the final 15-15 bucking battle of the regular season and an opportunity for the PBR world championship contenders to grab momentum Momentum heading into Las Vegas next week. This crowd is on its feet. It's the world's most dangerous sport from the sandy beaches of sunny California. Famous Huntington Beach has played host to our riders this weekend. Former world champ Guilherme Marchi catching a wave and he hopes to be sitting on top of the world a week from now. Our current world number one, Joao Ricardo Vieira, sees today as a golden opportunity to pad his lead as he continues his quest for a gold buckle. And world contender Mickey Mouse is unwritten in his career. One cowboy is going to try to break that streak and win $25,000 in the process. Surf City USA is ready to serve up the final 15-15 bucking battle of 2014. And just off the sand, we welcome you to our Surf City Skybox. A pleasant offshore breeze, onshore breeze, I should say, blowing alongside nine-time world champion Ty Murray. I'm Greg Umber. Ty, this may be a fun and quite unique venue, but for all of our riders, today is serious business. They all have something to gain, whether it's money, points, or momentum. Big time, Craig. This is double points here. You can't get caught up in all the beauty and all that. We're on the eve of the world finals. You know, this is go time. This is where they can not only pat a lead or give themselves an extra cushion going into the world finals, but more importantly than that to me, this is where confidence is won or lost going into that. And I, I know for me, uh, every time I went into the world finals with a lot of confidence and felt like I was riding good, that's when I did the best. One guy who has never lacked for confidence and has been enjoying his time in Huntington Beach is Matt Triplett. He's standing by with Leah Garcia. Craig, I've got the classic American cowboy on the iconic California beach. How can this intimate setting, this venue of Bulls on the Beach, help you in the season finale as you push forward? Yeah, you know, the PBR is putting a great opportunity for us. Double the points the week right before the World Finals. How much better could that get? A couple more points, maybe get a little closer to that world title opportunity. You already have so many fans. What can they look forward to seeing? They can look forward to the best Bulls in the world with the best Bull Riders in the world and a great opportunity to see us fulfill our dream at this beautiful beach and the scenery. It's going to be awesome. Good luck. Thanks, Craig. We take a look right now and how it's all going to line up. It's the general insurance matchups to wait for. Stormy Wayne's going to start us off aboard Jeremiah. Bulls on the beach, 15 riders, 15 bulls. You can see we're going to make our way through Gage Gay. We'll meet LL Cool J, but really, when you get to the meat of the batting order, the top guys in the world, Alves, Vieta, Joao Ricardo Vieta, as well as Galerme Marchi against Mickey Mouse, the $25,000 bonus bull. This crowd has been building throughout the afternoon and we can't say it enough it's not going to be every day you get a chance to see bulls buck on the beach but just south of huntington pier we are ready for matchup number one and ty it's stormy wing who we often refer to as our home run hitter going up against the bull in the form of jeremiah that we haven't seen regularly only two times on tour yeah but this bull he'll go either direction and he's probably going to go both directions uh before it's all over this bull has a lot of kick I think Stormy Wing's riding as well as I've ever seen him. Uh, in Oakland, he was flawless. Uh, you know, and we, I was talking about how important momentum becomes, and, and I believe it's that way in any sport, especially in this sport where you where you have the odds stacked against you so heavily every time. Uh, 
you know, to, to have confidence and to feel like you're on riding a winning streak in this sport is huge. You mentioned him being flawless in Oakland. He went three for three. That was his first ever built for tough series win. He capped it off in the championship round aboard Mr. Bull. We will actually see that bull later on in this telecast. Stormy wing shaken and stirred and eventually off 4.71. Well, this is a very impressive bull, and you know, Stormy's really making a good ride. You can see his bull turns back away from his hand, beats him around there a little, but he makes the adjustment and gets set down just where he wants to be. But boy, that bull really gathers himself up and uh, puts all of his power into the next jump, and it was just too much for Stormy. This is the 8-15-15 bucking battle of the season. Stormy Wing yet to get a qualified ride in any of them. And before we go next, we'll join another one of our broadcast team members, Shorty Gorham. Shorty, it's interesting, isn't it, when you talk about these bulls, they go through injuries and rehabs just like any professional athlete. Yeah, you know, and it's wonderful to see, Craig, the technology that's going back into to rehabbing these bulls. Buck Dynasty is a bull that, that was injured earlier in the year. They're actually swimming him. This is kind of a tread pool type of deal. And uh, they've swam this bull for several months now to try to build these muscles back up to try to rehab that. Uh, working on this bull, they, they found some issues with his horn, so they surgically removed this bull's horn, which I think, Ty, uh, and I would like to get your opinion, I think that's really going to help this bull. This is a bull that used to really shake his head and kind of switch things up on his front end. I'm excited to see this bull's trip. I think it could be outstanding. Well, I think I think we're going to see a great trip from Buck Dynasty. What I would weigh in on, on no horns is it, you know, that that's something that helps the rider. It, it, Whenever you have those big horns swinging in front of your face, that tends to make a guy want to set back. Maybe not on purpose, but just subconsciously. And it takes a really, really, really ranked bull to have no horns and to be a world-class bull, essentially, uh, because it, there's not that fear factor. And Ty, our fans who've been paying attention this year know Casey Hayes has had a metamorphosis in terms of how he's been able to handle those really ranked bulls. He was the first man to ever ride Mississippi Hippie. He rode Shepherd Hills Tested as well. Clap him already. <laughs> but he's not going to have any luck against Buck Dynasty, and Buck Dynasty just gyrating throughout that ride, and eventually Casey Hayes worked off at 3.45. You know, you can see this, this bull still wants to sling his head. I think that's how this bull gets his momentum. Uh, you know, I think that's where he gets his whip. I think that's, what, you know, it's kind of like in, in gymnastics. You, uh, gymnasts, wherever their head goes, that's, that's where their body's gonna go, and I think, I think that bull uses that to his advantage. Very quickly, we're on to our third matchup, which is Emilio Hacende against Percolator. These two have actually met twice before, and it has never been close. The Bull, not only in the 15-15 bucking battle in Laughlin, but also to start the year in New York City, bucking Hacende off in two and change. Ty, what do you think he's got to do this time to try to make the third time work? Well, you know, you can bet that's something that's on his mind. This Bull's going to be right there to the left. The clock stops at 7.99. You can bet there's a challenge in Hasende's future. He's going to run over and push the button. That bull had been ridden four out of his 13 times this season, including buck offs of our world number one, Joao Ricardo Vieira, Marco Aguche, Valderon. The list goes on. Yeah, this, you know, this. This is when you know you're seeing guys that are the best in the world. You know, he's making the adjustments and, and doing what it takes to ride this bull. You see him, he's just so far out of there right here at this point. He's trying to hang in there as much as he can. Right there might be a slap, so he's, it's gonna be less than what it was before. He will get called officially on the slap, so a missed opportunity for Hasende. He goes from being the only scorer to now being one of three early buck-offs. Some of our headlines to follow at the moment. Joao Ricardo Vieira, our world number one for the past five weeks. Bushwhacker still unwritten in his final season on tour. He'll retire next week in Las Vegas. Those finals begin Wednesday. And rookie Gage Gay, not only going for that Rookie of the Year award, but very much in the world title hunt 
in his first year. Well, a few moments ago, the one and only Bushwhacker Ty was introduced to the crowd. Everyone knows what's on the line for this bull, trying to win his third ever Bull of the Year title. But smart men, some men just like yourself, think it's going to be a difficult task. Well, they, this is a great bull, but there's a lot of great bulls. And, it, you know, I can't wait for the finals and, and seeing that matchup as well. They, we're going to have several world championship races there. Next up is number 13 in the world standings, Marco Aguche. He goes up against Velvet Rain. And before they do, let's check in with Leah. Craig, one of the questions that many people ask is, why would you ever want to ride bulls? Well, I asked that very question to Marco Iaguchi, and he said, number one's the friends. Number two, I love the reunion feel that I get every weekend going down the road. But mostly, it's because I really like riding bulls. He's got almost a 55% riding average in his career, or 50%. And then when you look at the, these tough bulls, which we have here at Bulls at the Beach, these are the 15 best bulls in the world. His average on those drops close to 16 percent so he admitted to me that this is where he needs to pick up his game well and that's a common theme ty going back to what leah said in terms of marco liking to ride bulls that's what i would think you need to have if you're in the running for world championship you have to have a passion for what you do well, you, yeah you got to have a love for it and you know i think a lot of us guys that, that ride bulls it, you're talking about the, the ultimate challenge as far as mentally speaking as an athlete. You know, all, all sports have the pressure of winning and losing. Uh, bull riding has that in spades, but it also has the pressure of living or dying. And, and that takes it to a whole other place as an athlete as far as how you have to co compartmentalize your thoughts and your emotions and stay focused and in the moment and fluid and still able to to have the counter moves, still be able to continually put your body in a position that counteracts what the bull's doing to try to get you off of his back. Last moment pressure preparation from Marco. Heard the go. A Gucci looking smooth as silk <laughs> on Velvet Rain, the first qualified ride here in Huntington Beach. That's I mean, a case tie. Sorry to interrupt, but I was going to say that's a case tie where he just makes it look easy. He really does. You know, this is a good bull. He has good jump and has good kick, and he's around and round. And, you know, it's funny if the second jump, if he would have you know, slung a guy to the end of his arm and whipped him out of there. He just said, boy, that bull was really, really ranked. But Marco set up there. His counter moves were perfect. They were perfectly timed, and that's what it does. It just it, it just takes all the power away from the bull and, and makes it look simple. That's your job as a professional bull rider. 84 and three quarters. We'll find out whether that's good enough to win this eighth bucking battle. Here are the seven who have won previously. And in a year, really, where we've seen the lead in the world standings go up and down and change, it seems, week to week. There have been seven different winners of the seven previous bucking battles, and that is definitely symbolic, it seems, of the year we're having, where there are close to 10 guys still with the chance to win the world championships. Those world finals start Wednesday on CBS Sports Network. Talk about getting hot at the right time. Valderon de Oliveira won in Biloxi two weeks ago, eighth last week in Allentown after only riding four of his last 32. Now he's ridden five of his last six. He's got his work cut out here. This bull is probably around to the right. Really strong. All of his movement is guys call uphill. So you see big movements with the front end, not following it up with those big kicks. So a guy's got to work to stay up front and stay close to his rope. He's against Stanley Fax, Max, and he's on the clock. And he is off. Whether he was hurried because of the clock or whether he just never found that safe point, Valderon looked unsettled as the gate opened and he pays the price. You, you know, you heard me talking about this bull being uphill and how strong he is and how much it, the inertia is all up and forward. You know, Valderon's one of the strongest guys going and has been for a long time. I want you to watch how far this bull slides him off of his rope. Watch at this point as he comes around. Look at this right here. You know, it's just more than he can, more than he can handle. His counter moves weren't exactly where he would have liked them to be today, and a big, strong bull like that will make you pay for it. Still only one qualified ride to go with the handful of buck offs we've seen already. Next pairing is Chase Outlaw going up against a whopper. I'm a gangster too. These 
to have danced before in Tulsa of last season in the championship round and only lasted 1.7 seconds. Yesterday, Chase Outlaw spent some leisure time not getting hammered by the Bulls, but getting hammered by the surf line. Give him credit, though. When you're in Huntington Beach, you got to try surfing in Surf City, USA. Yeah, yeah I had a chance to, to talk to Chase about that down in the locker room, and he said, man, I don't know if I'm cut out for that surfing. <laughs> He's built like a good surfer, compact, stay low center of gravity, but wasn't able to translate it from bull to board. We'll see what he can do now in his second attempt against I'm a Gangster 2. This bull is taking care of the likes of Cody Lostro, J.B. Mooney, our defending PBR world champ, Mike Lee, the champ back in 2004, Galerme Marchi. And this is a bull tie that it seems every time leaves the shoots, sets a new standard. Yeah, this one is is really good. You know, like, like I say, he's in the he's in the race for a world championship and round to the right, big time kick and fading, a lot of speed, uh, strength. This this bull, there's so much going on so rapidly that there you can't make a mistake for just even a second because it just it multiplies so fast on you it's like a snowball so you've got to be right on your game matching moves again those counter moves are only counter moves if they're timed out perfectly i'm a gangster two and chase outlaw about to dance i'm a gangster two one of the bulls that's being considered for world champion bucking bull this season it seems every time that gate opens, he fires. You just heard Chase Outlaw giving some instructions. Yeah, he's telling him to rattle that gate in front of him to get him to stand up. He's going to be around to the right, right there in the gate. And when he comes around, he means that you're going to see a lot of speed and a lot of kick. Outlaw now on the clock as well. Push him over. Push him over. If that clock gets to zero, he will be disqualified. Chase Outlaw bucked off with about seven tenths of a second to go. 7.33. This is a different trip that we're seeing from I'm a Gangster 2. And, you know, I talked about momentum going into the World Finals. Don't get me wrong, this isn't a horrible trip, but this is a horrible trip for a bull that's in the running for world champion Bucking Bull. Uh, the owners of that bull are a little nervous right now. That's right. The judges only give that bull a score of 43 and a quarter. That's going to be nowhere near good enough to challenge the likes of Asteroid, Bushwhacker, and Mickey Mouse. Well, our leader here in the 15-15 bucking battle in Huntington Beach, Marco Gucci. He's your bad boy mower lead dog. Coming up, two young guns of the PBR. First, it's Brazilian Eduardo Aparecido. It's almost like you were seeing him defy the laws of gravity watching that ride. Then, Rookie of the Year frontrunner, Gage Gay. Gage Gay wins his first ever Built for Tough Series event in fine fashion. That's when the PBR 1515 bucking battle continues from Huntington Beach, California. What a crowd here in Huntington Beach. Surf City USA turning into Bull City USA for the day. This crowd continues to grow. For some longtime fans, others just seeing it all for the first time. Our world standings heading into this last 15-15 bucking battle. Joao Ricardo Vieira saw that lead reduced. Fabiano, your winner last week in Allentown, now roughly 500 points behind. Marco Aguche comes into the weekend 13th in those standings, but a win here, since it is worth double points, could help a lot towards helping his momentum, as Ty said, moving on to the World Finals. Our next pairing, Eduardo Aparecido, the compatriot Why not of Marco Zuche, now gets to match up against Hungry Eyes. This bull unridden in his career. One of those buck-offs was Aparecido in Laughlin a couple weeks ago. Yeah, this bull's gonna be to the left right there, and again, you know, a lot of uphill. Uh, comes out of a right, you know, generally when a bull comes out of a right hand delivery, that's going to put that bull on the right lead. And, 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 you know, nine times out of ten, you're going to see him spin to the right. This bull likes to follow that gate around, come around to the left. 
Ty, we've way. talked about Eduardo Aparecido before and how quietly he has put together a great year. Currently ninth in the world standings. Here he matches against he matches up, excuse me, against Hungry Eyes, a bull that has bucked him off before. Yeah, this bull should be to the left around the end of that gate. And has given him some trouble before. You know, the, having the top 15 bulls here, the, there's a reason they're here. These are these are the bulls that are that are as hard to ride as anything there is. Third rider we've seen today put on the clock. You might want to be careful. He's going to be right over here. You heard Shorty Gorham giving some direction. 2.69 is all that last. Very close to the last time, which was in Laughlin, they paired together. In Laughlin, it lasted 3.88, so a Parasito losing some time here. Yeah, very strong bull, and you know, he never, his timing's off from the get-go. You know, when, when you did see him forward, it wasn't because he was put him, putting himself there in a counter move, it was because the bull kind of jerked him forward, and then that really messes up your timing. That doesn't feel good right before the PBR World Finals, trust me. 20-year-old Gage Gay now getting ready to match up against LL Cool J. Let's take you back to the 15-15 bucking battle in Billings, Montana, where Gage not only did quite well, he won it all. Yeah, I love, I love watching this young guy ride, and you know, that's a bull away from his hand. Every time the bull jumps, you see him break forward at the hips, move around there perfectly, step off on his feet, and said, what is the easy way to make a living? LL Cool J's been ridden one time this season out of seven outs. That one time was Brady Sims in Fresno for 84 and a half points. The only score on the board is 84 and three quarters. That's Marco Aguche. Let's check in with Leo. Gage is not so far removed from being off the Built Ford Tough Series Tour. He's a rookie. He says he likes these outdoor events. LL Cool J <laughs> does just enough to get Gay, the youngster, off at 5.35. Bulls like this are really hard to stay forward on, and, and watch how this bull stays flat and, and moves forward each time, and you don't see a lot of break over. Look how Gage is leaning back kind of the whole way on the end of his arm, sliding back off of his rope. He didn't, he didn't have the, yeah, you can, you can watch the uh, bullfighters right here. This is a bull that, Takes a look at all three of them. Says, which one of you guys do I want to get? <laughs> maybe, Shorty, maybe he just doesn't like pink. Yeah, you know, I don't think I, I don't think he could make up his mind. He saw that bull kind of throw his head up in there. We were all trying to get him to, to come to us. Uh, he didn't know what he wanted to do. I think he just wanted to enjoy the beach. <laughs> don't we all? This crowd not only enjoying the beach, which is behind him, but the bulls in front. Only one qualified ride. Your bad boy more lead dog, Marco Gucci. Still to come, Cody Nance. Cody Nance, a triple winner this season. And an always amped up Matt Triplett. The Bulls name is Boo Ray, but Triplett's saying Booyah. That's when the PBR 1515 bucking battle continues from Huntington Beach, California. Well, here in Huntington Beach today, it's not just bulls, but there are bands as well. Larkin Poe, made up of Rebecca and Megan Lovell, based out of Atlanta, Georgia, entertaining the crowd in between bull rides and mainly buck-offs today. We only have one qualified ride here in Huntington Beach, standing room only. The crowd is a big one for our final 15-15 bucking battle, appropriately named Bulls on the beach. And this is one of those pairings, Ty, where a lot of hope and a lot of promise have been put on Cody Nance and Mr. Bull. It's a rematch. Nance came close at last year's World Finals, 7.45 seconds. And when he drew this bull yesterday at the press conference at Huntington Pier, the rest of the riders just let out a groan. I think this, yeah, I think this could be huge right here. And you know, I'm really becoming a fan of Cody Nance and, and for the simple reason of how much effort that he puts out. And, you know, I talk about that being such an important component in this sport. I think it is in all sports if you're going to be a world champion. But, uh, you know, especially this sport, when you're talking about this level of ranked bulls, 
you're going to have a lot of chances where you're not in the perfect position, where you're in compromising positions, where you're in dangerous positions. And it's imperative to just keep going at it, and that's what Cody Nance does best. Speaking of world champions and danger, look at that. In attendance, Randy Couture, former UFC champ, MMA legend. He's the one guy we might be able to pick out of the crowd that would A, get on a bull, and B, ride him. Well, I wouldn't go so far to say to ride him, but I wouldn't doubt that he'd get on one. Cody Nance, I spoke with him earlier today. He loves this opportunity, number seven in the world, and he has big plans for Las Vegas. We're only a few days away from our world finals, and he wants the chance to prove his worth before then. But Mr. Bull gets the final say, and it really was just a slight stutter step tie that seemed to get Nance out of rhythm and eventually cause that buck off. Yeah, I really feel like this is one that got away for Nance. And you see that bull's kind of getting jammed up in the chute there. He tried to turn back really fast right there. And when that bull come around, you saw Nance's hips just a little bit to the outside. And these bulls are coming around hard enough and kicking big enough that they're gonna make you pay for it. There's a lot of centrifugal force there to the outside of that spin. Cody Nance becomes another victim here on the beach. Our next pairing is gonna be a good one as well. Matt Triplett up against Oklahoma Bell. Let's show you what Matt Triplett was able to do in Billings earlier this season. The bull that we just saw, Mr. Bull. Well, Triplett rode it for 90 and a half. Yeah, and just flawless. Staying up over that front end, you see all of his counter moves were timed out perfectly. He was exactly where he needed to be the whole time. You know, <laughs> As a professional, you just want to recreate that over and over. This bull here likes the left as well. Going to be away from his hand, uh, just, just like we've seen when he comes around and means it. Our second score is going to take the lead. And if Cody Nance wanted momentum heading into Vegas, Matt Triplett says to this crowd, I'm going to take that momentum and make it my own. 87 points. He's your new bad boy more lead dog. Yeah, Matt, Matt does a really good job of not being exactly where he wanted to be the whole time. Watch how he'll give this bull his arm right here. You see him, he kind of slides back and drops, drops over into the position of where he needs to be. That was a good job by Matt Triplett. He spoke with Leah earlier. Let's go back to her now. You barely made the finals this year. Now you're sixth. How'd you make the change? You know, just my uh, workout for my workouts. Uh, MGM Michael Johnson place. Done great. Working out, Craig. Woo! Working out, always a key. He becomes the second score and our new Bad Boy Mower lead dog. Woo! We've got a number of rides still to go. Our top riders in the world, including Mike Lee, going up against Riding Dirty, No Restraints. And then our two-time PBR world champion, Silvano Alves, hoping to make a third world championship his own. He's gonna have a chance against a bull with three names. All right, all right, all right. A quick reset of our standings. Two scores, Matt Triplett moments ago moved to the lead. He's the new Bad Boy Moore lead dog just ahead of Marco Aguche. And this will be the last bull out of the shoots. Mickey Mouse, the Monster Energy bonus bull, $25,000 on the line. And we take a look at Marlene Henry, who is the stock contractor, Mickey Mouse, her only bull. And it's a good one to have, a World Bull title contender. Yeah, that, that's like only having one horse, and he's in the Kentucky Derby. That You know, that's it's so special for her to, to have that bull. And, and I've really been, that's the bull I've had my eye on for the last couple of years. Next up, we've got Riding Dirty, No Restraints, the bull going up against Mike Lee. Mike Lee, one of those guys who, at one stretch of this season, Ty, looked basically unbeatable. But the past three events, he hasn't been able to buy a ride. Six straight buck-offs for the former world champ. Yeah, they put Mike Lee on the clock as well. Here you go. That's the Mike Lee that for a number of weeks this summer 
as well as for a few weeks after the summer break, had guys talking about him making a run for another world championship. We saw the re-ride flags out, Shorty. Yes, sir. But that's not going to keep Mike Lee from doing a victory lap. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you see down there, Shorty, that would warrant a re-ride? Well, Ty, tell me what you saw. Well, this, you know, this bull starts out pretty good, but he just kind of loses steam. And uh, Mike Lee's setting on him so perfectly. This is a younger bull that's, that's just kind of finding his stride. And sometimes you bring him up here and put the big boys on him. And, and what has worked for them th this far in their career doesn't work. Sometimes they get a little dazed and confused. He's going to earn 81 and a quarter points, checking right now with Jerome Robinson, whether or not he's going to take that re-ride. And it looks as though it's thumbs down. Mike Lee going to keep the score, keeping in mind, of course, that it is double points here in the 15-15 bucking battle. So Lee perhaps thinking from the business end, he comes into this weekend about 1,600 points out of yeah, the top that, spot. I don't even understand. That's not the business end. You're 1,600 points out of it. You got double points. Well, I don't understand what happened to going for first. You're talking about a million-dollar bonus for the world champion, and Mike Lee has a lot of, a lot of ground to make up. This is Silvano Alves, comes into the weekend third in the world standings, only 736 points behind his friend, Joao Ricardo Vieira. The bull goes by the name of All Right, All Right, All Right. One out of seven times in his career he's been ridden. That was Stormy Wing for 84 and a quarter points. It was Galerme Marchi who got bucked off last in Oakland. You know, this bull should be around to the left. Kind of has a little bit of suck back once the bull guy's down on, the, on his head. Another rider on the clock. Somehow, some way, Silvano stayed off the front end of that bull, and none of that looked pretty, but he's going to get a qualified ride. That's the kind of effort I talk about. And, you know, whenever you're riding bulls at this level, it's, it's so important, I can't say it enough. You're going to get out of position. These ranked bulls are going to get you in compromising positions or dangerous positions. You've got to keep fighting for where you need to be. That's exactly what the two-time world champion does right here. You couldn't have been in a worse position into your hand like that, bowed over that front end. He just kept trying, and that's that could be a huge difference here. If there was a king for declining re-rides, it would definitely be Silvano Alves. He keeps 80 and a half points, declines the re-ride, and sits in fourth overall. Lee and Alves ride, they both decline the re-ride, which keeps Matt Triplett in the lead. Bushwhacker, one of eight bulls who will be going for that world champion bucking bull title. But if you had to look at trending up or trending down at the moment, Ty, Asteroid and Mickey Mouse trending up. I'll tell you, it's going to be a, it's going to be a great race. And, you know, I think Bushwhacker could be right for an upset. He's still ranked, but he's just not as spectacular looking as he used to be. And that's what it takes. Just like with any competition, there's got to be something that just makes everybody go, wow. And with those, all these bulls right here, that Roy Bull is as really caught my eye this year. Julio Moreno, Bushwhacker's contractor and owner, deciding to rest Bushwhacker this weekend just to give him a little extra zip and all the chance he may need to win a third world champion bucking bull title. These are our three matchups left. It's going to end with our bounty bull matchup, Mickey Mouse against Galerme Marchi with $25,000 on the line. Four scores, two of them declined re-rides. Matt Triplett, more than happy. He's got all the momentum he could need heading into Las Vegas, where we will be starting Wednesday to crown our world champions. A guy who had a lot of momentum coming out of Allentown last weekend, Ty. The winner there, Fabiano Vieira, cutting Joao Ricardo Vieira's lead in half. And now Fabiano has this chance against Walkoff. This is the guy that I think is riding the best in the world championship race. Uh, I think he's the total package. I think he can ride any type of bull. The one hiccup is his free arm shoulder 
is in bad shape. He's got it tied down. He's got a device on underneath that shirt that keeps his elbow from getting way up high uh, to keep that shoulder from dislocating. That At some point, that shoulder is going to be a factor. This guy's so talented, he can make great rides, even keeping his elbow way down and his hand real close to his shoulder. Walk off. Able to buck off the world number two at just over five seconds. And to your point, tight. Ty, about his right shoulder, like a typical rider, you're sort of downplaying this injury. He has had it dislocated for a number of weeks this season, but he's found a way. And when bulls go into his hand, he really has to fight. Well, yeah, you know, that bull's spinning to the left. All the centrifugal force is trying to whip him to the right. The counter for that is to take your right arm and really move it up over your head and get everything going there to the left. That's how you shift your body weight. He doesn't have that luxury. This is like going into a fight with one arm, one arm tied behind your back. A quick look at our scoreboard. The Bulls dominating the Cowboys, but give the Cowboys credit. Four is a lot more than we've seen in some of the bucking battles earlier this season. So we come to our world number one, Joao Ricardo Vieira. He is aboard Fire Rock. They have met before. It went the Bulls' way in Billings. 4.46 seconds was the buck off time, but since then, it really has become a season for Joao to remember. I think this could be a good matchup right here. This bull's gonna be around to the left, right there in the gate. Really blows up in the air. A lot of break over, a lot of up and down. JR's been on him before. He knows what to, ex to expect. He's the world number one right now. Whenever you're talking about the world number one, if he's had a shot at a bull before, successful or not, he knows how to change his game this time around. Let's check in with Leah. Joao Vieira Ricardo told me that the reason why winning the world title is so important to him is simply the title. That's what he wants, world champion by his name. He said, but the million dollar bonus will be good for his family and he can move on from there. It's been his goal for many years. He's been keeping an eye on some of his predecessors coming to the United States and riding. He doesn't plan on leaving anytime soon. And this is the first year that he wants to do this and then continue on for next one. Last year's rookie of the year, now poised to win a world championship. Double points on the line. Silvano kept that score of eight and a half. He's the closest challenger to Joao in terms of those world standings. Bull's kind of leaning on the back of the chute. JR feels like he can't get his leg quite where he wants it to be. He's gonna have to get aggressive. Oh, he took a pop. That touch was head-to-head -head contact at 2.64 seconds. Joao was simply outworked and pays an ultimate price on that one. Yeah, you, you know, his timing's not where he wants it to be. You can see him comes down. That, you know, that could have been very dangerous right there. And that, that's a bull that's jumping and kicking straight away. You know, if we go back and talk about confidence for the world number one, his confidence has to be at an all-time low. That bull was jumping and kicking straight forward. And not a great bull score, only 42 and a half points, sitting in the beach chair and enjoying the sun and sand. Matt Triplett, your bad boy more lead dog with one ride to go. Still to come, large and in charge, Nick E. Mouse. That's world championship contender right there. And that's a broken jaw with a helmet on. That's just wicked right there. That's when the PDR 1515 bucking battle continues from Huntington Beach, California. Our final matchup is the Bad Boy Mowers bonus bowl matchup. $25,000 on the line between Galerme Marchi and Mickey Mouse. They have met before in a 15-15 bucking battle this season in Oklahoma City, and it was Mickey Mouse dispatching Marchi in only two and a half seconds. Well, I really think this bull's incredible, and when he leaves the shoot, he gets a lot of air, 
He's a lot like Bushwhacker. He's smart. He understands the game. He's not going to do the same thing twice. He's going to change things up according to what the rider's doing on his back. I've had my eye on this bull for a couple of years, and, and I think he is I think he is uh, right in the running for world champion. And Shorty, I talked to Marlene Henry earlier, and she said she was psyched to see what that bull did when J.W. Harris stayed on him a long time. He actually thought about working harder. Yeah, you know, and that's, that to me is a trademark of a great bull. When they actually get tested, and then they come back stronger the second time. That shows that they know what this is all about. One of the interesting things about Mickey Mouse, he stayed at, at the ranch that I grew up on about 25 Five miles down the road from here. Kevin Lottomay told me when he unloaded him off the trailer, this bull win these pin, and he said he bucked as if someone was riding him. He said he's never seen anything like it, and Kevin has been around for a long time. This bull's feeling great. I love it in Southern California. Gotta do it. Oh, so close for Marchi. That bull's last out was in Biloxi, it only lasted two seconds. But for Marchi, he almost took him to time, 7.19. Well, I'll tell you, this is an off day for Mickey Mouse as well, and don't get me wrong, he still rank, has a lot of break over and drop, and he's, and he's not gonna be a picnic for anybody that's on his back. But when you're talking about that, how you want to see bulls be very spectacular when they're going for, for a, a world champion bull. He was not that. I'm a gangster too was not that. So, you know, we talk about this momentum going into the finals. Those two bulls right there, that was a misfire for both of them. Marlene happy that Mickey Mouse got the buck off, but maybe not that happy about the score. All smiles, however, Matt Triplett. He leads a four-man charge who were able to complete their tasks here in Huntington Beach. He is your winner in the final 15-15 bucking battle. Let's send it to Leah. And the first ever Bulls on the Beach competition. Highlight for us the thrill of this victory. You know, it's awesome. The PBR giving us this opportunity to get the double points right before the World Finals. What a great opportunity they, they gave us. And double points you needed. I needed that, you know, maybe work my way a little up the ladder and get a little closer to that world title. Congratulations. Thank you. The Kawasaki Strong Bull of the Day. The bull that took care of Emilio Hacende for the third time. Percolator. You know, I thought this one looked really good. Really getting in the air. And when you factor in those big horns, that's spectacular. He'll get the bull accolades on the day, but no one better from a riding perspective than Matt Triplett. Kawasaki strong bull of the day, Percolator. And Triplett, the winner of the battle on the beach at world famous Huntington Beach. Well, it all comes down to next week where the PBR World Finals from Las Vegas will begin Wednesday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern with Inside the PBR presented by B&W Trailer Hitchers on CBS Sports Network. For Ty Murray, Leah Garcia, Shorty Gorham, and our entire crew, I'm Craig Hummer. Thanks for watching.